I've been perfecting and tuning my stake method for years, and now it's finally done. Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. This is my steak, or at least it is a giant cut of meat that we're going to turn into steaks. This is a ribeye from a cow that has been used for milking as well as for its meat. And I'm using this whole cut because it allows me to cut it up into steaks which are two fingers thick, exactly the way that I like it for my method. These steaks are absolutely beautiful. They got a nice dark red color, a good amount of intramuscular fat, and that will guarantee a tasty and juicy steak. The steaks are now ready to be cooked, and now it comes down to our skills, our abilities to turn this beautiful piece of meat into something delicious. And the first step of this method is all about the cooking technique, because I'm gonna be using what is called the reverse sear technique. And that's what the R stands for. So it's time to fire up the barbecue. I'll be cooking on the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe. And I'm going to set it up for indirect heat because the reverse sear method requires that we bring the temperature of the steak up first. And that is a good opportunity to smoke the steak and add flavor. So I'm gonna open up the lid, remove the slow roller, add big block charcoal, light it up, Once the charcoal is lit up, I'm going to add a chunk of smoke wood and it's going to go straight over the hot coals. As you can see, I have a moderate lit up barbecue, low temperatures, because the R in the method stands for reverse sear method. And reverse sear means slowly getting the steak up to temperature first. Time to place in the slow roller. The reverse sear method also requires for us to keep our eye on the temperature. So I'll be using a thermometer. A thermometer that I can stick into the steak. It will measure the temperature inside the steak as well as inside the barbecue. Now it's time to close the lid. Set the barbecue to two stripes open in my case. Set the bottom vent to one finger open. And that will set my barbecue to smoke at a temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna leave it set to that position until the steaks reach a core temperature of 54 degrees Celsius. I'm making a sauce to go with that steak while we wait for the steaks to cook. And it's not gonna be a sauce in the sense that barbecue sauce, like sugar and tomato, it's gonna be super, super healthy. It's gonna be tasty. It's going to be an Italian version of a salsa verde. Nothing authentic, just something that tastes freaking good with steak. I'm gonna start with 30 grams of basil, chop it up. 30 grams of parsley. One clove of garlic, a tablespoon of capers, a teaspoon of chili flakes, three anchovies, three small pickles, the zest of one lemon, the juice of half a lemon, and a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. Then grind it all up. There we go. There we go. Now, feast your eyes on this. It just looks like a green puree. Of course, the quick taste test. <laughs> Woo! That is so good. It's official. You need to try this. I just got the notification. It said, there it is. Remove the steaks from the fire. But take a look at this. Target is 54 and it's only at 51. What does that mean? In that resting period, the temperature of that steak will still rise to 54 degrees, from 51 to 54. Let's get them off. The steak's picked up a beautiful red smoke color. It is the same thing that you recognize from a smoke ring at a brisket or beef ribs. And it means that our steaks picked up a good amount of flavor, a little bit of nitrate, and as you can see, they're fully cooked, except for the fact that they don't have a crust. So now it's time to take that R of the reverse sear method, which is first cooking the steaks, then making sure that they're exactly at the right temperature of 54 degrees Celsius, and only then can we sear them off. So while these steaks stable out at temperature, you and me, are going to bring that barbecue up in temperature. First thing to do is to remove the slow roller. And as you can see, not all of the charcoal's lit yet. And that is because of the low and slow setup. So all I need to do now is just let the oxygen do its job. There's plenty of fuel 
All I'm going to do is open up the bottom vent so the air can move freely. Mix up the charcoal. Add a little bit more if you need to, which in my case I do. And now we are ready for the second step. First we had the reverse sear. Now we have the C. C from charcoal and cast iron grill grates. It is the perfect mix to add flavor in the searing process of the steak. This is a Kamada Joe cast iron half grill grate and it has two sides. One with broad stripes and one with small stripes. The small stripes are for smoking, the broad stripes are for searing. Cast iron has the unique ability to absorb loads of heat. And once you put food on this, it will sear it instantly. And remember, we don't need to cook these steaks anymore. We just need a sear. That's why we're going to use this side, get it up to temperature. I'm going to place the cast iron grill grate on the barbecue so it can come up to temperature together with my charcoal. Of course, I make sure my steaks are dry before I start searing them. So we're going to get the perfect crust. Let's get this puppy on. Look at how fast that goes. Beautiful sear. A sear on a cast iron like this is going to be done within seconds. So you want to stay close. You want to get that perfect sear. You might want to have a little peek every now and then. And make sure you move it to different positions of the grill so the grill stays nice and hot. When searing the steak, you don't want to care too much about the stripes. Of course, they look pretty, but it's not the main target here. The main target is to create as much of a crust as humanly possible. So you're going to get as much flavor as possible, but still have the infused flavor of grilling over charcoal. And that's why I prefer a cast iron grill grade over a flat surface. We have just finished phase two of this steak cooking method. Now, it's time to start on phase three. Phase three is seasoning after you cook the steak. And I know a loads of chefs tell you to season up front. This is a personal preference. But let me tell you, if you season your steak up front, you're basically dry brining your steak because it has a long cooking period to go and you're altering the flavor of the steak. This can be beneficiary if you have a low quality steak, you can make it taste better, you can enhance the flavors. However, we have a beautiful piece of meat. Why would we want to infuse that steak with different flavor profiles than it has at the moment? And to make sure that the flavors are absolutely perfect, I created my own steak rub. It starts with a tablespoon of fleur de sel finishing salt, two teaspoons of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, a teaspoon of dried parsley leaves, a teaspoon of dried chives, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and a teaspoon of rosemary. Mix it up and it's done. And that's an absolute perfect mixture to put on your steak after you grilled it. The steaks are moist and they will absorb the flavor instantly. The salt that is in this mixture is fleur de sel, which is a light sea salt. It will melt instantly onto your steak, boosting its flavors and giving you an intense kick. Something you would have never had if you season your steak up front. I guess these guys like steak too. Ooh, perfect cooked steak. Crust on the outside, a medium rare on the inside, no gray edges, absolute perfection. This is what steak dreams are made of. And let's not forget about our magical sauce. That Italian salsa verde is perfect for this steak. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, well, most definitely I have been waiting for this moment. There we go, guys. Hmm, this is so good. I got all kinds of flavors, but on top, bah! Salsa Verde. Try this steak, man. See how you like it, then judge me for what I created, and then, then, try that salsa. Mm. Mm. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm.